Hey, Steelers Nation, it's Joe Rocky here with the Pittsburgh Syndicate. And as you guys well know, I am in love with this defense and the top-end star power here. And there was another nugget that came across my desk here that I want to share with you to just talk about how loaded this defense is. Three times, and only three times, in the history of the NCAA, has a player won the best secondary player in the nation, which is the Jim Thorpe Award, and the best overall defensive player in the same season. The first one who ever did this is a Hall of Famer named Charles Woodson. For you guys who may not remember Charles Woodson, Woodson it was a Raider, he was a Packer, but he was responsible for making the greatest play that the refs bungled in NFL history. He came around the edge. He strip sacked Tom Brady, and that was a strip sack. But because it was cold, it was snowing, it was a Boston, the refs created a roll on site called the tuck roll, and they took that away. Now, I didn't take anything away from the greatness that was Charles Woodson. The dude's a first ballot Hall of Famer, and the guy's amazing. But that's the kind of pedigree that comes from winning the Thorpe and the Becknerick in the same year. Got to fast forward a little bit to get to the next guy who did it. From the University of LSU. First guy in LSU history, actually, to win the Thorpe. And he's created a dynasty thereafter. Drafted and went to Arizona and started himself a great career. And that's Patrick Peterson. Guy's going to be a Hall of Famer as long as he can put the longevity up. He's already put up the big base numbers, and he is a starting corner on your Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, Peterson's been interviewed a lot of times since becoming a Steeler this offseason, and we might recognize him for those who watched Arizona Cardinals football, and God bless you if you did. But the long story short is the guy, his career and his prime was an amazing cover corner. Think about Joe Hayden just better. I mean, Joe Hayden was great. I'm not trying to diminish Hayden. That's how good Peterson is and was. Now, he's not quite at the stage where he's going to be able to do man coverage for 60 plays a game, Revis Island him, and forget about him. However, he is able to give that to you for 30 plays. And furthermore, the Steelers' secondary is so loaded, we don't have to play only one way every time. He was on a Minnesota team last year that only played zone coverage. And because Minnesota Vikings didn't have a pass rush, if you're only doing zone coverage and the quarterback has time, you will exploit it. We saw this when Brady would do to us whenever it was that gap before Watt turned on and before Harrison was, you know, was basically turning off. We couldn't get to Brady and he exploited us all over the field, especially in the slot corner slot. So that is why Minnesota's defense failed last year. That's not a problem for the Steelers' defense. We're going to get a pass rush up and down this roster. And when we look at that and say, when it does come push to shove, when it's third and five, and we need some of the shutdown chase, Peterson can still do it. When it's time to game up and step up, Peterson can do it. And how do you beat the Bengals? What? And coverage. And we're going to have both this year. It, this is going to be so crazy good. I said yesterday, or crush, I'll be saying in tomorrow's episode as I film these out of order about who the next likely offensive coordinator will be for the Steelers. But I did break down the talent that's there. This team should be putting up 21 points a game. With how talented this defense is, 21 points a game is a 13 win season. Because this defense is not letting up anywhere near 20 points a game. Because there was a third player in NCAA history who also won the Thorpe and also won the Beckner. At the time of the draft profile, Tomlin went on record of saying, I love this guy. But I also love the fact that my teams are also so good that I'm never going to be able to draft someone like him. Well... Give all the credit in the world for the Steelers making the trade in a year where we thought that we were quitting. In a year where, quite frankly, you made the argument we should have quit. Ben was down. We were going to have to play duck. 
why should we make a trade to make us better? Because that's what the Pittsburgh Steelers do. We go for the win and we never quit. And we went and got ourselves the third one in Minka Fitzpatrick from Bama to go out and win the Thor and the and the best defensive player of the year. And when we look at this, yo, defensive MVP and what? Two of a group of three that are almost guaranteed to be Hall of Famers in your secondary. A great up-and-coming second man in Watt and Highsmith, who might actually steal a lot more sacks than people are thinking from Watt this year. This team has star power in a way that the Steelers have not had. But we didn't do it like the Rams. The Steelers are not stars and scrubs. This is the most depth that we have had in the secondary probably since Ike Taylor. And when we look at this team, there are not holes. There is great pressure. There is great talent all over this field. And oh, by the way, 97 here is probably going in the Hall of Fame too as the heart of your defense. So when we look at this team across the board, you already know Watt's probably going. Mink is going to go based upon pedigree, and Peterson's already written his ticket. You might have five Hall of Famers on the defense this year. This defense isn't letting up points. We're playing an incredibly soft schedule by its virtue, and there's a very good likelihood that as long as the offense can keep itself together, and 21 points is not a huge hurdle in this league, but as long as the offense can do that, this team has a very real potential of getting the bye. Here we go, Steelers. Here we go.